Hello, Internets. I'm Father Casey, Franciscan friar and Catholic priest. And in this video, I'd like to talk to you about the Eucharist, the source and summit of our lives as Catholics. Only instead of explaining it at you, I thought it might be nice to have some conversations, conversations with ordinary people. In this video, I'll show you five different people in their perspectives. A fifth grader, a college freshman, a Knight of Columbus, a religious sister, and yes, even a Protestant. What I hope to show you in these conversations is that the Eucharist is meaningful in many different ways and that it can be talked about from many different perspectives. Enjoy. Okay, what grade are you in? I'm in fifth grade. Fifth grade, that's fantastic. Do you know what the Eucharist is? Yes, it's what we celebrate when we go to church. It's the body of Christ that we receive at the time of communion. Wonderful. It's a great celebration that we have, and one of the things that really defines it is that it's a meal. And I love meals. Do you like to eat? What's your favorite food? Well, tacos. Tacos. I like tacos as well. Mm -hmm. I think one of the great things about meals is obviously the food, but it's also who we get to share the meal with. Do you ever have family dinners? Yes. What's it like to eat with your family? It's a nice evening because I get to eat with all my family without distractions like work or mm. school. That's good, without distractions, we put our phones away, we put our computers away, we turn off the TV, and we just kind of see each other, right? You can talk about what you did in the day, you get to know someone. I love that too with my family, and I think that's what the Eucharist really does, not just with our close family, but with the whole human family, the whole Christian family, that we get to sit in church and be with our brothers and sisters in Christ. Do you ever think about that, that you're sharing a meal with your bigger family? No, I think that's new to me. That's new? Well, that's beautiful because that's what Jesus wants us to do. He wants us to break bread and invite people into our homes and we go to his home, the house of God. And so if that's the case, what do you think we should do with the people around us if they're our family and we're sharing a meal with them? Hmm. I don't think I've ever thought about that. And so how do you think you get to know people that are around you in church? Well, by asking them questions or bringing them closer to God. Mmm, that's good. I think the sign of peace is a good way. You can shake hands, you can say hi. Sometimes at Christmas time, people give gifts or food boxes or food donations at our church. How we, on Wednesdays, they, we see everybody standing by the church when they give them bags of food. Exactly. So if they're our brothers and sisters, we don't want them to go hungry, right? So we share that meal of the Eucharist, but we should also share the meal in our homes, in our city, so that if people are hungry, we feed them. What do you like most about the Eucharist? I think that it's, it's Jesus alive and present there. Because mm -hmm. I've always wondered, what did he look like? What, how, how was he? And when we receive the Eucharist, I feel there's this, this feeling when you take it, or when you receive it, and it makes me all happy and get a warm, fuzzy feeling inside. Well, that's wonderful. And so it is, it's Jesus coming to us. But you know, the body of Christ means more than just the literal body of the man who was on the cross. Do you know you're the body of Christ too? I didn't know that. When you receive that meal, you become that meal. You become the body of Christ. So all of us, your, your mom, your dad, your brothers, sisters, all the people that you're in church with, we become the body of Christ. And if you're the body, that means that you are food for the world. What do you think that means? Well, maybe it could mean that when we're talking to somebody else or when meeting them, we tell them or we bring them to church to receive the Eucharist so they can do their sacraments. Yeah, so you can bring them to be fed. And I think even being with them, being nice, sharing with them, showing them the way, we get to feed them in a spiritual sense because they come closer to Christ. So that's something I want you to think about is when you go out in the world, you get to feed people with your very presence because Christ is in you. You're the body of Christ. What do you think of that? That's cool. That's cool, I like that. So Catherine, you are a freshman in college. Yes. You're also a Catholic that loves the Eucharist. Yes. So what does the true presence mean to you? Because it's so, such an important part of what it means to be Catholic. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so uh, the true presence in the Eucharist is such an interesting thing um, to think about as a Catholic. And I feel like that is a big reason why I am Catholic. Mm -hmm. um, oftentimes, I feel like uh, for a lot of people, um, 
it's it's hard to fathom. Mm -hmm. You know, when we say like, this is the body of Christ. Doesn't look like Jesus, right? It's a piece of bread. Right. <laughs> so how could it possibly be the body of Christ? Mm -hmm. But like through the consecration, like that moment of consecration, like when heaven touches earth and, and that, that miraculous moment happens and the, the bread does truly change mm -hmm. into Jesus's body. Um, it's, it's, it's so difficult to explain and comprehend. Yeah, it is. It's, it's, it's so beautiful, right? It because it's so not beautiful. bread anymore. It's our Lord. It's not a symbol. It's not no. just a nice ceremony we do. Um, have you taken any philosophy courses? I, I'm taking one right now. Yeah, yeah, so in order to understand this, we really need to understand philosophy. Mm -hmm. And it's a weird thing, so we can kind of bend our brain here, but I think we can do it. It really comes down to what we know as real. Right. And for us as modern people, it's physical things mm -hmm. make something real. But that's not the case for medieval and ancient people. And we have a little experiment here. If I were to show you a golden retriever, mm -hmm. you know it's a dog, right? Yes. If I showed you a chihuahua, you'd know that's a dog. Uh -huh. And I could show you a cat you would know that's not a dog. Yes. Even though they look very similar, they have four mm -hmm. legs and all that. I could show you a dog uh, that has little wheels for legs, mm -hmm. those poor little things you've seen where they kind of push around. Mm -hmm. You'd say that's still a dog, even though it only has two legs. Right. I could also show you a taxidermy dog, mm -hmm. and you'd say, it looks like a dog, but that's not a dog anymore. No. There's, there's something intuitive where we look and we say, I know exactly what that is, even though the color is different, the shape is different, the composition is different. And so I think this speaks to the fact that there's like a spirit, an mm -hmm. essence to something that we just know I intuitively. And that's what the ancients would have said about the Eucharist, mm -hmm. is that even though it looks like bread, it tastes mm -hmm. like bread, it sounds like bread when you break it, there's an essence that we know is just not bread anymore. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Is that? It does. It does. It's a weird way of thinking though, right? It is. It is, but it puts things into a different perspective that's a lot easier to understand. So what we'd say is there's a substance and an accident. So that's where we get transubstantiation. Mm -hmm. The substance is changing. That essence, that thing that is that what makes it the thing is different. It's no longer bread. Mm -hmm. It still appears to be bread. Mm -hmm. The accidents, the color, the shape, the taste. Yeah. How do you approach them when you realize that you're receiving Jesus? Well, I think the Eucharist is the most beautiful thing because it's through the Eucharist that we're able to be immersed in the love of Jesus. And every single time that we go forward to receive communion, it's like, it's the most intimate experience we could possibly have with Jesus because like we're receiving him. Like we're not worthy of it, but mm -hmm. he still, he still wants, he yeah. still wants us to. And just, it's interesting. I think about sometimes how, you know, um, Jesus said, like, I thirst. Mm -hmm. And he thirsts for us to be in that communion mm -hmm. with him. And so every time we go up and receive that, we just, like, it's Jesus inside of us. Mm -hmm. And it's it's so beautiful. And I think one of the things that we forget is, yes, Jesus inside of us, which means we become a part of Jesus. Mm -hmm. And it means our venial sins are wiped away. Because yeah. how could you have venial sins if Jesus is with you? He yeah. just completely obliterates them and makes us pure. Mm -hmm. That, that's very refreshing and it requires that we have such a p good preparation then. Mm -hmm. How do you prepare when you go to Mass, knowing that you're about to do the craziest thing in the world? Yeah, well, for one thing, a big thing that's been like a kind of a game changer for me is like examinations of conscience. Mm -hmm. Like never going to like receive the Eucharist like in a state of sin mm -hmm. because um, you're receiving something that is so beautiful. And so of course, I, I want my heart to be pure yeah. before I receive Jesus. And um, it's, just even before, like when, you know, during the offering, like when, when the consecration is mm -hmm. about to happen, just, just really meditating on the fact, like, like this is, this is Jesus we're about yeah. to receive. And when you walk, when you walk down the aisle, um, to receive, receive Jesus, I kind of think of it like a wedding, you know, mm. like you're the bride walking yeah. down the aisle and you're looking up and there's like, there's the groom, there's Jesus, mm. there, there's Jesus right there. And you get to practically like get married to Jesus. Yeah. And it's that that's something that it might I work like better for about. you than for me. Yeah, but, yes, right. <laughs> but it's, it's just such a such a beautiful concept, mm -hmm. you know, like you just get to experience Jesus fully. And so, Sam, you are a knight of Columbus. Yes. You are a devoted Catholic. Yes. You have received Eucharist for many years. Yes. Twenty five. Twenty five years as a convert. How wonderful. And I think one of the beautiful things about the Eucharist, I think you understand really well, is that it's a sacrifice. What does that word mean for you in association with the Eucharist? Well, by by the sacrifice of Christ, uh, our our Amen is is it's that it's 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 more than just a, I believe. It's mm -hmm. it's more like I would stake my life on it. Yeah. I'm literally, 
I'm literally giving my life for mm. whatever. Am I going to? Am I going to do what Christ told us to do? Am mm. I going to feed the poor? Am I going to clothe the naked? Yeah. Uh, and in any aspect of my life. So, however I live my life, I should live my life in the presence of Christ, yeah. just by partaking in Christ's sacrifice. That's such a beautiful way of putting it. St. Paul says that we should offer our bodies as a living sacrifice. And I think you've kind of captured that there, which is we're not just receiving. It's not just some gift that we get and then we get to go and be our own selves. It's something that we give to the Lord in the way that we live and the way that we live for one another. That's correct. It's, 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 it's overpowering, mm. the, the sacrifice. You know, just the, it's, it's much more than just bread and wine. It sure. is the body and blood of Christ. Uh, Catholics like to say it's the body, blood, soul, and divinity sure. of Jesus. Okay, and, and by partaking in that, uh, I, I want to say, I don't know what, this, what saint said it, but they uh, become what you receive, mm -hmm. the body of Christ. Yeah, exactly. And I think the only reason we're able to do this is because he has given that sacrifice first. Exactly. So this is not, um, you know, God just waving his little hand and everything goes great. This is a God who is willing to give up his own life. And so all the way back in Exodus, we get the, the foundation of this where God chose a lamb and he sacrificed that to set them free. But then Jesus came along and said, I am that lamb. I'm going to give up my life, my body, my blood, so that you can be free. And when someone's given that to me, well, then, of course, I can give up a little bit for other people. And, and the Jews in that time knew that because they were first century Jews, they mm -hmm. knew all of those Exodus stories. Yeah. And, and in John, you know, they literally, you know, Christ drunk uh from a sponge on a hyssop branch. They mm -hmm. use a hyssop branch yeah. to put blood on the doors yeah. in Exodus. Mm -hmm. Do you ever think about that when you're going to receive communion? You're, you know, you're singing a song, everything's nice and fun, and you're receiving this great gift. But do you ever think of the cross and just look up and say, wow, that's what I'm, I'm receiving and doing that right now? It's quite, it's quite overwhelming. It is overwhelming. Uh, you know, to... to it's it's overwhelming in this in the in this in the sense that we don't really we don't literally have crucifixions mm -hmm. today, sure. but by but by but by sharing our life, because if we're not setting the uh, if we're not being a model mm -hmm. of Christ in the world, then they say then someone could say well, that Catholic over there, uh, that, and we don't. We don't want to do that. Right, and not just a model as we believe and we live moral lives, but a model in that that cross is mine too. Exactly. To take up that cross daily to say, I'm offering myself as a sacrifice exactly. in the good works you mentioned, yes. but the way that we love our family members when maybe they're exactly. difficult. Yes. Mm. So, Sister Teresa, you are a sister. You've consecrated your life to God, and I think a big part of that is the Eucharist, is it not? The Eucharist is the center of our life. Yeah. It's, it's our nourishment, and it's what leads us forward to do what we're doing. Well, I think that's so important. We often talk about what the Eucharist is and how we receive it, and I think those are important things. But in some ways, what's most important is being sent out to be the Eucharist. Exactly. I, I love that song, We Are One Body, mm -hmm. One Body in Christ. And because the Eucharist is who we are together yeah. at church, but to me, especially as I go forth and serve every day at daybreak, which serves the homeless, mm -hmm. to me, that is very much the body of Christ. Yeah. It, it, it is not just the Catholic Church body of Christ, mm -hmm. but we bring everybody together, whether they're homeless mm -hmm. or housed, whether they're Catholic or Jewish, that together we all come to see the presence of God. In one another. And we can. I love the, the quote that I'm going to paraphrase from St. John Chrysostom, which is, if you fail to see Christ in the beggar at the door, you're going to fail to see him in the chalice because they're so intimately connected. Jesus identified with the poor. He served the poor. So how could we receive Christ and not do what he did? And that that is, we are, it's a double thing. One, we go out as his hands and feet mm -hmm. in the world today. But in addition to that, we encounter, can you see Christ in each person? Mm -hmm. And I have a picture of St. Vincent de Paul, uh -huh. our 
our patron, and he's sitting around the table, and it's yeah. around the table with leaders and people who are poor, and Christ is in the middle. Yeah. And and that is what Eucharist is every day, every minute. And I think it's um, something that we connect on as a Vincentian, as a Franciscan. You know, where else can you go in society outside these places where you do have the rich and poor sitting at the same table? Where you have people mm -hmm. becoming quite different from what they were born, quite differently what society has told them to be, to have this community that is very unusual. You know, and they express it in different ways. The other day, one of our participants, Linda, said, Sister, sister, I wrote a poem. Uh -huh. can, I, can, I, can I read it to you? And I'm like, okay, and I didn't know what you to expect because yeah. I didn't know. Yeah. And she wrote this beautiful poem that we are one. Mm. We are one. And she, it went on to say we are one under the sun, one under the, the moon. We are some on the streets and some at table, but we are one people. Mm -hmm. And that's what Eucharist says to us. For we sure. Are, we, are, we are God's people. and We are one with the Lord wherever we are. And it uh, doesn't come naturally. Uh, it's very difficult. We need that Eucharist. And so I'm wondering... Are there times where it's very difficult to work with the people you work with, or even to work with your own sisters? Or even to work with myself. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yes. What, <laughs> someone, said, we are. someone sent me a postcard once, mm -hmm. and it said, God loves you, and I'm trying. And I, <laughs> <laughs> and I love that. I think it's so often because mm -hmm. you, 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 know, you can see someone having a difficult moment. I mean, our people every day at daybreak, mm -hmm. they have no shoes sometimes. Mm -hmm. they, ha they have yeah. no food. And yes, they are having a hard time. Um, but you know, it's interesting. Sometimes it's easier to stop and step back yeah. and see Christ in them versus maybe one of the sisters or one of the coworkers who just doesn't do things exactly sure. the way I want. Sure. Exactly. Um, but it really is to stop and to listen. Mm -hmm. You know, I think in our society, we don't necessarily stop and accept the person. Yeah. And think about the stories of the Gospels, the road to Emmaus. They, mm -hmm. It was in the breaking of the bread that they realized where they were. That was what helped them listen. That's what helped them see and said, ah, this is the type of people we are. How mm -hmm. could we not see? And I think it's it's so important to realize that, yes, this is the source and summit of our lives, right? But it's not our entire lives. Mm -hmm. There's the whole point of the Mass is the dismissal. Go out. Go out. Go out so you can share what you've received and then bring back from the world what we need to share with each other. And so I think that there's this ebb and flow, this kind of centering and returning, this mission mm -hmm. of the gospel of, of the Eucharist, that without it, we're just a people that stays indoors and locks the doors and is afraid of the world. But that's not who Jesus wanted us to be. All right, well, Chris, yeah. thank you for joining me. Yeah, you are a resident Protestant. I, well, that's welcome good to, to the yeah. dark side. Yeah, yeah thanks. Yeah. So we're talking about the Eucharist today. Yeah. And I, I think one of the beautiful things about the Eucharist is this idea of covenant, right? It's mm -hmm. the, the new covenant of Jesus instituting for us as his people. Yeah. Um, what does that mean for you? Because I kind of have a concept of what that means for me. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So when we talk about covenant theology, when we talk about the covenants, we think about all the way from creation to restoration. Mm -hmm. And so then really living in that kind of from fall to redemption, so the new covenant um, of Jesus. And so communion, uh, mm -hmm. the Eucharist, the Lord's Supper, whatever you'd like to call it, really then being um, a remembrance, a meal of, of that new covenant of celebrating and remembering what Jesus did on the cross um, for us and then his you know, subsequent resurrection three days later. And sure. So, yeah. For me, it's a covenant, um, first of all, between us and God, mm -hmm. right? So God did something for us, and now we are bound to him. Mm -hmm. But I think it's also a covenant between each other, mm -hmm. that we are now bound to each other in a way that we're not just some social club, right. you know, we're not just some nice people that get together yeah. on Sunday. You know, that's my brother over there. And yeah. we've got this fictive family in some ways mm -hmm. where we're not actually blood brothers and sisters, but mm -hmm. man, we're, we're thicker than that. Yeah, absolutely. I think, I think part of too what communion is doing is it's calling us back to the past. So I think Passover meal, right? Mm -hmm. It's it's remembering as the Israelites of, this is where you were um, in Egypt and, and the Lord brought them out um, and saved them. And so I think that's remembering the past while also remembering that covenant, that relationship with the Lord, but then also calling us to his people, that we are yeah. a part of the body of Christ. And so we take that together um, as we remember him together. And then we sit and we, you know, we get to share a meal mm -hmm. um, or we get to, you know, sit in our pews and, and take communion together. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and so there's this sense of communion we keep mm. talking about in this covenant. And I think it's not just the past, but it's today, right? Mm. So it's the people to my right and to my left. We're here together. Mm. And it creates kind of an uncomfortable conversation mm. now between us, which is, 
we're in communion, but we're not in communion. And mm. how do we reconcile that if, mm. you know, our baptism unites us and there's right. nothing that separates that, you know, there's neither Jew nor Greek, neither mm. male nor female, slave nor free. Yeah. And we, we accept that and it's wonderful. But then there are other things we're mm. like, ah, you know, we don't see eye to eye on. Yeah. How, how do we have that, that brotherhood if we're not together? Yeah, I think, you know, that's something that I've been thinking about. My wife grew up Catholic, mm-hmm. and so in going to Mass, it's kind of, you know, the, the reality that, that I cannot receive communion mm-hmm. um, as yeah. a Protestant, as a non-Catholic uh, member. Right? Yeah, it's, you know, you got to do, I think it's one of these, yeah. you know, receive the blessing, <laughs> yeah. um, which I'll, I'll take the blessing. Uh-huh. Um, and so I think it's, I think in that moment, there, there can be, truthfully, there's been some moments where it's like, man, like, well, I know Jesus, and yeah. I'm saved, and I know uh-huh. him, so yeah. so why don't I get to partake in this Um you know, and I know for us as Protestants, there's also some level of exclusion, right? That, sure. that this is the Lord's table. And, mm-hmm. you know, one of the things that we say is, as long as you are in good standing and sure. not under discipline at the, the church you're a member of, and mm-hmm. that you have a relationship with Jesus yeah. and see him as your Lord and Savior, then then you can partake. However, mm-hmm. there is some exclusion in that comment. Sure. Um, yeah. I don't know if that really answers the question. No, I think and there's some tension, but Sure. But and I, I think bad. what it highlights is yeah. that it's a difference of, of uh, degree and not kinds, because mm-hmm. you, you yeah. do also have limits. You know, mm-hmm. you're not just going to be going on the street and just, you know, throwing right. Jesus around. Right. Um, and so we, we have the same kind of thing, mm-hmm. and I think it's just a, a measure of how tight is that covenant. Mm-hmm. And for us, I think there's just some things we're still a little mm-hmm. stung by and still mm-hmm. saying, you know, we're not we're not brothers yet in the, mm. the fullest sense. Mm. And for me, it's it's uncomfortable. But I I think the the discomfort needs to be there because mm. I think the other side is ah, don't worry about it. You know, mm. like let let's just forget about right. it. No, I th- I think we need to work through our differences. Mm. And yeah. th- for me, that's that's a call to we shouldn't be divided. And what mm. can we still do? And I hope it mm. propels us on to say. We don't see eye to eye, but right. we can. How can mm. we work through this? And there's been some great efforts in ecumenism mm. over the years, yep. certainly over the last hundred, to say, you know, we're not as far apart as we think we are. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I think that's part of it. Even, you know, talking about this conversation today, it's w- what do I think I know about the Eucharist from mm. from a Catholic pr- perspective? Yeah. Um, but what's also reality? What's true? Sure. I think there's always a lot of rumors, mm-hmm. intention points, and you can really dig in and say, okay, I want to lean in and try to understand Sure. where somebody's coming from and what they believe and why they believe it. And, yeah. and we might come to the to the table and mm-hmm. say, we disagree on this, sure. which it matters. It's, it's yeah. an important aspect. The sacrament is important. However, um, we can also begin to understand and then I think see the um, the humanness, um, see the love, see the sure. un- and understand, even if we do disagree. Yeah, because so, it, it's I, about that belief mm-hmm. too. So I think that's the starting point. So for yeah. us as Catholics, we believe it is the source and summit of our faith. It is mm-hmm. the true presence of Christ, body, mm-hmm. blood, soul, and divinity. Yeah. And there are certainly some Protestants that lean towards that way, some mm-hmm. that don't. Yeah. If we don't believe we're doing the same thing, mm-hmm. that's a problem, you know, first off. But maybe there are, there are plenty of Protestants that do believe in the real presence. Mm-hmm. And so you say, well, why can't I per- receive? I think it's also, well, the commitment to each other. Mm-hmm. You know, are we going to come to the same church and worship, or is it just kind of a convenience? I'm going to come this mm-hmm. time and go to my church. Do we hold different fundamental beliefs about the way the church exists in the world? Mm-hmm. These are still things we're working through. Yeah. Um, but it's it's challenging, right? Yeah, yeah. Oh, absolutely. And even Protestants, we yeah. don't fully agree, you know, sure. across the board all the way from consubstantiation, yeah. I believe, with the Lutherans yeah. to the real presence with, you know, Reformed and Presbyterian mm-hmm. to sort of memorialization from really the Baptists of sure. this is in memory of. And so... Yeah, to talk about again, Protestant, I mean, what does yeah. that word even mean? <laughs> right, exactly. It's like, yeah, where, where do I align in that? And, and so I think, yeah, I think... Um, things are important and it matters. Mm-hmm. And so sometimes we don't take ourselves so seriously maybe, but we yeah. take that thing seriously. And I think um, communion, I think the Eucharist is something to take seriously because it matters. It's yeah. it's really important. It's important to me. I know it's important to you. And, um, and so again, I think conversation and understanding and then again, beginning to draw closer in unity, sure. even while there might be some differing of opinion on, on certain convictions. Well, and so. one of the reasons I wanted to talk with you today yeah. for our viewers is for my Catholic viewers, mm-hmm there can tend to be kind of a superiority sometimes mm. so like oh there's catholics and then everyone else and they don't mm. really care about the eucharist mm. well to, to varying degrees that's true but to varying yeah. degrees that's absolutely not true yeah. and so i thank you for your faith and thank yeah. you for your your own commitment to the lord's supper yeah oh absolutely and it's something too that again different churches i think handle differently mm-hmm. and, and, and take it so again i think seeking to understand and really dive in because there are a lot of misconceptions and it's sure. easy to have a lot of misconceptions about catholics mm-hmm. and i think there's this tension that's created unnecessarily sure. that doesn't need to be there that's silly when there are maybe some tension points there mm-hmm. are valid but we can yeah. still have unity in christ um in our relationship foundation and, yep. yeah we can still be friends and fantasy baseball <laughs> and you know right. all that exactly. so trivia yeah absolutely. so absolutely